stuff themselves. So fat and satisfied. They're everywhere. They're watching me now. Soon enough, these days will end. There will be no rules going forward. People are standing up. That's what a reckoning sounds like. Hello there, everyone. This is going to be my brand new Star Wars and or trailer video. They finally released some footage for the actual series that'll tell us what's going on with the plot. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. I'll explain what's going on with the episodes, when they're going to premiere, and what they've said about The Mandalorian Season 3 and some of the other big series that they were showing off footage from. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Of course, I'll be doing full episode videos for this when it premieres. I'll also be doing all the episode videos for Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is pretty much starting right now. Hello there. But the really big news first, Andor is going to be premiering August 31st, and it's going to be 12 episodes long. It's the longest Star Wars series that we've ever had so far. They're going to show the first two episodes on day one, like a lot of previous Disney Plus series. But it's still the longest series that we've ever seen so far. It's going to start five years before Rogue One. They already confirmed season two. Season two will be the same length, but they said that season two will cover most of the four years lead up to the Rogue One movie. And like the very final scene of the series they've already planned out will lead up into the opening moments of Rogue One. It sounds like it might only run two seasons. I suppose it could run three seasons. I think originally they planned for five, but then they just kind of winnowed it down and just expanded the episode order. I think people like longer series just in general. Just give us more. Give us more. A lot of you saw familiar faces during this. Pretty much all the same actors that are at least alive at this part of the timeline. The big characters will show up from the Rogue One movie. But as the name implies, Cassian Andor is the main character of the series. Even though it's an ensemble, there are several main characters, like Mon Mothma is featured heavily in the footage. Stellan Skarsgård's character is featured heavily during the trailer. You have this council of what looks like either admirals or captains meeting, which is very evocative of A New Hope with the Council of Moths, even though they're much lower in rank. So just in general, the series is meant to give us a more accurate picture in what really happened during the Rise of the Rebellion, because they kind of did a speedrun version of that during Rogue One. Like, the Rebellion already exists when Rogue One picks up. It's just in its earlier days. This is really meant to show you the deep dive into how the Rebellion came together, and there are a lot of moments during the trailer that give you vibes from Rogue One. Like, it wasn't all just the Rebellion. Like, there's some Imperial characters that seem like they helped sabotage the Empire from within, besides Galen Erso. Like a lot of former Imperial characters who helped the Rebellion in their efforts to fight the Empire. Most of the trailer seems like it takes place on this one very particular planet where they have this Empire processing facility. They're building a lot of things. Maybe weapons, maybe droids, maybe just random parts. Most of the actual Imperial shipyards, like the really important stuff, the Imperial Navy shipyards, were in outer space because the ships were so large. But I love the way they open the trailer with this really quiet vibe. You have this worker coming up and just banging this drum as he's trying to get people to start working, also heralding the Empire showing up to start banging on their doors. If you turn the closed captions on for the trailer, it's calling this character the Time Grappler. I think the idea is that he's just helping keep general time for the city, like, hey, it's morning, everybody needs to go to work. There's this really cool guttural throat singing as the Empire shows up to start banging on people's doors, and you see townspeople all over the planet crouching down like something really bad is about to happen. Like they want to show you what life is like under Imperial rule. The fact that most of this planet seems to hate it in showing you why the rebellion actually comes together in the first place. Just common people really, really hating the Empire and wanting to get rid of them. It seems like from this giant junkyard with all these parts here and this droid just driving through them that they're using it for a general parts facility. Like they bring a bunch of junk here and use it in this processing facility in the background. You see a bunch of the workers, it's hard to tell what it is that they're building. It seems like some specialized parts. You see a bunch of common townspeople running around trying to hide their weapons. All people who are part of the early rebellion trying to fight against the Empire, but they haven't all come together. Like, they're all these disparate groups of people. It sounds like at the beginning of the series, they're not actually calling themselves the rebellion yet. Just a bunch of pockets of resistance that are slowly coming together in an organized way. Which really happens, I think, when Mon Mothma comes on board with a lot of the other top members. This younger character they're calling Salman Pak. 
Imperial troops land, start walking through the city. This is all meant to be reminiscent of those scenes that you saw during the Rogue One movie on Jedha, the Jedi Temple, which is Imperial troops, the Empire in general, just rolling through the city, wrecking everything that they come across. We see a bunch of cool new Imperial uniforms on these people coming to visit this person, question them. The Empire is built of billions and billions of people, so it would make sense that they would try to show you as many different parts of the Empire as possible through all these different live action series. We finally see Diego Luna's Cassian Andor figure for the first time. He talks about this Imperial Council of Officers meeting in this room, them being so proud of themselves. It sounds like they'll be one of the main antagonists of the series. The main person here in the white Imperial uniform might seem familiar. Just having four blue bars on a white uniform meant that they were a security officer or a stormtrooper captain, much lower in actual rank than a real admiral. So he might not be a full admiral during this series, or this might not be a council of admirals. But like I said, it's meant to be evocative of things you saw during Rogue One, Orson Krennic wore a white uniform. He was slightly higher in rank than these people. Also, a lot of people wearing white uniforms were part of the Imperial Security Bureau, meaning basically they were part of the Empire Secret Service. Big connection to the Mandalorian, too. Moff Gideon's character actually rose up through the ranks of the Imperial Security Bureau, so during this part of the timeline, he would have been marching around in a white uniform as well. We see more traditional, lower-ranking Imperial officers in more traditional-looking uniforms. It seems like most of these scenes of the Empire, though, are featured in and around this particular planet. Like, they're managing this Imperial processing facility, where you see all the workers, all the townspeople being forced to labor for them. Then they show a shot of Mon Mothma much earlier in the timeline, like I said, five years before Rogue One. It sounds like she hasn't become the leader or one of the leaders of the Rebellion yet. I believe Bail Organa is also supposed to show up during this series as well, too, because he also shows up during Rogue One. The way she talks about how the Empire, the Imperial Security Bureau, has been watching her, I need to be careful. This could be happening on Coruscant itself because she was an Imperial Senator. You see another Imperial character with a couple of Death Troopers. Remember, Death Troopers we saw during Rogue One. If it wasn't clear, it's the same actress who played Mon Mothma during Rogue One. She also played Mon Mothma as a much younger person during the prequel movies. It's just that she's aged so well that she looks very close to what she looked like during the prequels. It's kind of like Ewan McGregor with the whole idea of him turning into the Alec Guinness version of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, not a ton of time goes by before the original trilogy picks up, and he's supposed to look like really old man Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, those must have been a hard 10, 15 years that he lived there on Tatooine. We get a forest shot of a couple other Rebellion characters forming together in a much more sparsely populated area. And it looks like they're calling Stellan Skarsgård's character Luthen, and he actually might wind up being a big Rebellion figure, because the uniform that he's wearing isn't traditional Empire, even though they are wearing a couple different types of Imperial uniforms during the trailer. We thought that he'd actually be playing one of the main antagonists, but the big twist could be that he's actually one of the people who's really important in helping the Rebellion form. This seems like a wider shot of the Imperial Processing Facility, where they're doing a lot of the specialized labor or some specialized facility that's underwater. Then they show this younger Imperial character who's a main character. His name is Kyle Soller, but they don't list his character's name on IMDb. But he seems like he's going to be another POV character, but from the Empire side of things. He seems like he's preoccupied or obsessed with Cassian Andor's character. He's giving some Galen Erso kind of vibes, like he might be one of the people inside the Empire who helps sabotage the Empire, helping the Rebellion form. They're calling Fiona Shaw's character, who seems like she's part of the early Rebellion, Marva. But when she starts her voiceover talking about the people rising up, rebellion forming, like things finally turning in their direction, this is what a resistance is meant to look like. They show a couple shots inside the Senate chamber on Coruscant, so it does seem like Mon Mothma is going to be located on actual Coruscant during the series. And they show a bunch of different locations while they're talking about people quote-unquote standing up, the rebellion actually forming. Quick shot of Cassian Andor stealing a TIE fighter in one of their facilities. Because so much of this seems like it takes place on Coruscant as well, a lot of you asking, is there going to be Emperor Palpatine cameo scenes? Will there be Darth Vader cameo scenes? Because he probably had one of the greatest scenes in all of Star Wars during Rogue One in that ending scene. My guess is that they'll reference the Emperor during the series, but I'm not expecting to see a ton of Emperor cameos. And the same thing with Darth Vader, like maybe a little bit of Darth Vader, because Hayden Christensen did say the Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes aren't the only thing he came back for. So like he'll probably do something during the Ahsoka series to do Ahsoka and Darth Vader or Ahsoka and Anakin Skywalker scenes. And there's probably at least a little something going on with Darth Vader during the Andor series, even though most of it seems like it takes place between the Senate stuff with Mon Mothma and a lot of what's happening on this other planet with casting Andor's character. But my full Obi-Wan Kenobi episode one and episode two videos will post on Friday just like normal. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. And we might get a Mandalorian season three teaser trailer this weekend. If we do, of course, I'll do a video for it. 
They also made a bunch of other announcements about premiere dates during Star Wars Celebration 2. Mandalorian Season 3 is going to start in early February, right after the Willow series winds up ending. That's going to spill over into January, which is why Mandalorian Season 3 isn't starting till early February. They also confirmed that the Ahsoka series will premiere during 2023, but we already kind of knew that. That's not a big surprise. While you wait for everything, everyone click here for my Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 1 and Episode 2 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for my brand new Thor Love and Thunder trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.